Hey y'all, this is part 8, and it's the last part in working with objects, so well done in making it this far. Now if we can generate all of the keys in an object, we can generate all the values too. Object.keys, object.values. Relatively simple. Uh, there are other versions of this. I think there's one called object.entries. Um, but like a lot of these, we're showing you ways to get the basics done and ways to sort of keep expanding on the basics. So provided you can use object.keys and object.values, if you were to be introduced to something called object.entries, hopefully you would have a very simple time establishing what it does and then how to be able to use it later on. So, I'm going to round this out nicely. Object.values, pass the object you want in, and from that you're going to get an array of the values. Let's talk about our address object again. If we run this for the values, we're going to get 123, fake street, Springfield, QX, 99999. Nine, nine, nine. That was definitely the right amount of nines. I counted on my fingers. So with that in mind, we're going to complete a function that takes in one parameter, an object. Your function should create a values variable and assign it to an expression which generates an array of all of the values in said object by calling object.values, then return that values variable. Below is an example of the code running. Assuming that you will have completed the described function, get all values. So get all values, paste in our stub, paste in our test case, create a values variable, assign it to an expression which will generate an array of all of the values in an object, which is as simple as object.values called on object, or our obj, and then we'll return values. So if we run this, 12, 34, 28, looking good. Copy our completed function, put it in the input window, and that pickles our jalapenos. So, excellent work. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you in the next one.